Hi. Um, it's been an, over a week since um, since the last uh, talk. Uh, that's because I've been uh, in England for a week. So I thought I'll move away from the past just for this one video uh, and contrast it with how life now seems when you suddenly visit uh, England from somewhere else. What does it look like? Well, of course, we spent most of the time amongst family. So what we see is a, is a family, uh, more so perhaps than, uh, than any tourist would. Um, so I'll just go through it briefly. Um, the first day we went to Droit, which is, which is a nice little country town in Worcestershire, um, and visited the charity shops. Now, this is a new phenomenon. Um, there weren't, as I remember, charity shops in, in the 1950s. Um, I tend to have a sort of uh, mixed view on charity shops. They're quite good to shop in, straightforwardly. Um, how charitable charities are is, is a little bit questionable. They are used for all sorts of purposes, including excellent help for people in, uh, who, who need it. But they sort of also used as tax dodges for the rich in some ways. Um, the likes of Tony Blair gets paid a fortune to uh, to speak to a charity event, and you it just leaves a slight taint, doesn't it? But on the whole, everybody was very pleasant to us. Um, we found some nice items. Um, I just show you two here that I bought. I thought I found a, a couple of nice pigs. One because it's uh, was only obtainable by saving in the bank years ago. It's not the most rare one. It's I think it's the second one up out of four, but nice to have all the same and um, this one here which is I don't know whether you can, hear, I can make it do it now but it's actually metal um, get a bit of a tink there um, makes a nice change um, so we had a, a, a nice day there the next day um, we went to pick up I suppose it's a great niece and great nephew from uh, from school, uh, that was interesting. Um, how large the school was, how how many parents and pupils that there were there. I see that the teachers um, seem to bring them out uh, class by class and carefully look to see that the parent uh, is there and and send the child to them, which in a school that size is necessary, I suppose. Um, there was only three classes in my, in my infant school and and. Uh, that wasn't necessary in, in the 50s. Um, there was a sprinkling of um, uh, women with, with um, their hair covered, but as it was the first time I've seen in a normal circumstance was actually um, what I seen was a Muslim woman. Um, she wasn't actually in the full sort of draped thing, but she, was, she, she um, did, did have her actual face covered. And to be honest, you've got to feel sorry for the child. I noticed that how friendly everyone else was, how the mothers were talking to each other, and and um, how a couple of parents and, and their children would walk up together. But she was on her own, and, and the child came out on her own, went to her mother, spoke to no one else. It's sort of, it's just sad, really, I think, to be honest. Anyway, we'll move on to... Um, I suppose I'd have to go into a success story. We went to visit um, our childhood friend of um, Nita's and, and uh, husband who um, had had um, a, a cancer of the nose, I suppose you'd call it. He'd had to have a hole of one, uh, one side, or which side it was now, one side of his, his nose removed. But um, there's a tendency to sort of say things about the, the National Health Service, good and bad, it can do no wrong, or um, you're always having to wait here, you're always having to, and I think it seems from this story, um, they'd made a wonderful job of reconstructing his nose by taking some um, 
uh, skin from from his forehead a bit from this from the other side of his face and pulled it across a bit of sinew from his ear and so on and it just got a mark underneath here just a sort of uh, wrinkle almost um, and, and more or less nothing else to show for it a real pleasant surprise to see what a good job they've done the story of course involves things like having to go to Reddish, having to go to to um, various other uh, Kidderminster and finally having the operation I think done in um, in Birmingham um, but it's sort of it's the administration that seems to be uh, a problem that you you have to wait ages you have to go here for this and you have to go there for that the actual treatment that he seems to have got seemed to be excellent to be honest um, I suppose that in a way is an important thing, but delays and, and various administrative problems uh, as we have with other relatives waiting ages for an operation that should have been done, well they describe it as urgent and then you hear nothing for months sometimes. Um, but I have every hope, judging by this, that once the operation is uh, is done it will be done well. Um, it's, it's really a, an administrative problem that they can't seem to organize things and they and they charge for parking which whilst it isn't the end of the earth it is an insult really that you that uh, uh, the cost of sick pay and stuff and, and then but you expect uh, to cut down the amount you, you you give people when they're sick a fraction of their wages and then expect them to pay to park outside the hospital while they while they go in for, for some sort of uh, checkup or, or, or scan or something um just just outrageous really uh, and, and petty but overall i, I would say that uh, that it, i'd have more confidence in the work of, of the national health service than i would have done before we went and saw um, uh, how this had been done moving on the next day we went to the uh, tudor museum um i can't say i've, I've been that fond of uh, just school memories of the tudors not my most favourite period, but in fact, a wonderful museum. There was a small amount about the Tudors, which is quite well done. You were allowed to, uh, to try the, well, I didn't, but one was allowed to try on the dresses, um, which one person did. And, and it, well, it's just a nice thing, but there were lots of other things in the museum uh, things from the war, things from the 50s, which I <laughs> can remember. Uh, a ration book exactly like the one I showed you in one of the other. Um, talks, for example, but lots of lots of. I, I thoroughly recommend you the Tudor Museum in Worcester. Um, it's free, which is nice. I, that's a thing you don't get everywhere. Free to go in the museum, which was excellent, but not free to park outside the hospital. What a shame. Um, we we parked, in fact, in in Asda's car park, and we did ask him to buy from Asda, so we were able to get the, 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 the pound off what we bought, so in effect parking was free as well. Um, we went on to um, to visit Malvern Water, um, as we have a relative that, that works there, we were, we were shown around inside how excellent again, the true spring water from the spring simply um, treated with ultraviolet light, filtered and treated with ultraviolet light uh, to make sh absolutely certain that there are no um, harmful bacteria in there otherwise it's exactly as it comes out of the spring bottled in glass bottles which is really nice thing to see uh, it's a bit pointless putting uh, healthy spring water in, 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 a, uh, in, in a plastic bottle it spoils the whole thing these are in nice um, glass bottles uh, overall I was very very impressed and a nice little touch was they still do have gas street lights in Malvern and I think I might have mentioned in one of the other talks that as a child I wanted to be the lamp lighter thinking that was a full time job I actually got to turn off a gas light with the pole um, because the Malvern water people are responsible for the gas light in the street outside their place to turn it on and off um, morning and night um, and as luck would have it, somebody had forgotten to turn it off that morning, or maybe because it was a Saturday and nobody does it on a Saturday, so I was able to turn off the light. Um, something um, it wasn't important, but I've always wanted to do since I was a child, so there we go. Um, 
the next day we went to visit um, one of the great grandchildren uh, who waited till we left to announce uh, the fact that um, uh, that uh, <laughs> Nita had quite obviously spotted that uh, she's nearly five months pregnant again with her sixth child. Um, I have to say that whilst she has health problems uh, and that it's it's an excellent thing that, that we as English people in a way the more the more children uh, the better I think as a matter of principle I just hope that um, she's going to be um, okay we won't go on any more into that one um, we then went on uh, to another great granddaughters and um, they took a photograph of four generations of women which is a nice nice thing to, to do um, nice to see uh, a log fire um, not so many of those perhaps these days but it's nice to see that, that lots of things that you uh, might miss about England are still there in at least in in, in rural England um, they have a garden which not everybody has these days and then we went to um, uh, the daughter's house and we had lasagna and um, uh, that was a pleasant evening um, we saw um, well we saw perhaps the largest television <laughs> um, that well so I've seen so far um, it was it was imp impressive quality and not that I'm impressed by television as a general principle I sort of it's full of propaganda and time-wasting drivel. Not that we, I'm trying to say we don't watch it, but um, it it was a higher quality screen. I have to admit than than I've seen before, um, four times as many pixels or something. Uh, so anyway, yet another experience. Um, the next day we went to Pershaw, um, which we haven't been to for several years. Pleasant little town. Um, lovely uh, food in, in a very English um, um, cafe I suppose you'd call it. They also I think made their own bread and stuff. A um, couple of um, uh, charity shops and then went on to see um, another of the, the relatives um, and um, we saw a selection of um, interesting weapons from uh, a pistol that fires um, uh, pellets to, um, a, to a quality to to um, uh, air, air rifle and um, I suppose a ceremonial sword and dagger would perhaps be all that much use as a sword and dagger but then that's probably just as well but but um, nice looks nice then I suppose you'd say um, so an interesting afternoon there um, then on the next day we went um, we called in briefly at um, the army well the forces charity shop um, bought a couple of items um, so we've seen two of those uh, I think it's still slightly difficult to get used to the idea of the Union Jack as a friendly um, a friendly emblem. Uh, I don't know why, maybe it's from going to Northern Ireland in the past and in a Republic of Ireland registered vehicle during the Troubles, you, you just feel logic, you feel safe in the, where there isn't Union Jacks. Um, and more at risk where there is a Union Jack, it's just simply because we were in um, a Republic registered vehicle I think. Um, it's a strange thing because it, it, on one level it, it represents our country and yet it doesn't represent England and you feel as such and somehow you don't feel that the UK is under threat but you do feel that England is, um, its identity is and therefore there's a slightly negative aspect about a Union Jack, which I might point out here. Uh, one of the people that we did, that we, um, one of the relatives that we went to, had a Union Jack flying, and I absolutely know he absolutely means well, and he's stating his 
his um, that this is the UK and he's English and th this this is his house. Just a hint. It would be nice if you got an English flag. That would just put the, the, the icing on it. Suggestion. Um, we went on then and did the, the shopping, buying tea and pork pies and things, a few items that you can't get here uh, to, to take home as, as token things. And finally, we had a nice sort of little um, meeting with. Uh, with another of the um, uh, nieces and, and, and nephews, and that was a nice um, few minutes. Uh, interesting things, perhaps just to mention at the end, is I noticed several times that people referred to like the federal post box. Uh, it's nice to see that, that more and more people are recognizing that the UK is a federation of countries, it's not the country. And um, although it's on one level silly to call it the federal post, post box, it, it, as opposed to the British post box, because British has come down almost to be, um, well, so many people who aren't English and living in England call themselves British without. Uh, n meaning that they think they belong there, but to the very statement in actually showing that they don't understand what being English is at all. Um, so I, I, I quite liked to hear the, the federal um, post box and uh, various other federal, um, the federal, uh, the federal gas company instead of British gas, um, because it covers the the whole of the the UK, um, it, it's not it's not a national gas company. It's 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 wider than that that it covers. It doesn't do it very well, in all honesty. Uh, I tried to ring up uh, to make an appointment, and their attitude was, "Well, we'll come uh, at an afternoon to suit us, or some at a time to suit us, and if it doesn't suit you, well, that's bad luck. And by the way, will you give us your bank details, and so that we can we can charge you in advance whether you want us uh, just for an, for an estimate." Um, does seem very high-handed, and unfortunately, this is a growing trend with these international companies that you have to speak to a machine um, or a person who's acting like a robot. Um, utterly different to speaking to an ordinary small business, where if you say, "Can you come after half past four They'd say, "Well, not until the week after next or something, maybe. But they wouldn't say, "No, I can't promise you that ever at all." It's just, uh, it's just silly. And you, they'd expect to get paid either by sending you a bill or at least when they turn up and do the job and then hold their hand out, not hold their hand out for to, so that I can extract money from your, from your bank if we come to any sort of disagreement, um, is high-handed and, and, and treating, treating people like dirt, really, isn't it? Um, but that's not peculiar. <laughs> to England, that's for sure. It happens here as well, and, and indeed, uh, no doubt, in, in, in most places these days. I'd just like to say that this is a serious contrast to the 1950s, where every the gas board would be government-owned, well, owned by the people. It would have an office where you could go in and see someone and sort out how you were going to get them to come out. You would find a way. You would also, of course, have been living near um, the rest of your family, um, and you'd have helpful neighbours. Most of the women would be at home, even if you you weren't, um, and you could leave a key with somebody. Arrangement would be much easier to make, whereas in this case it was practically impossible. Uh, so that's definitely a downward slide. But on the whole, I was very very pleased with the trip. Lots of things were very pleasant, and the people were pleasant, and it was much more as I remember it than I imagined it would have been. Just these little niggles. So on that point, I'll say bye.